Hi everyone, uh, we are from Shiksha.com and uh, today we have a webinar which is a live interaction with industry experts on the topic Ideal College Selection Strategy Post-Lockdown Stage for BE and BTEC. So uh, we have four panelists for today, uh, Professor Subramanyam, who is the Principal of RV College of Engineering, Dr. Prasanna, Director Admissions at RUAS, uh, Dr. Narsimha, Vice Principal, CMR IT, and Mr. Neeraj Singh, who is the Director Admissions at Reva University, Bangalore. So all in all, all panelists will be sharing about their experiences and the best strategies which students should follow post lockdown gets over on opting for the right colleges. To give you a brief about the panelists uh, and the order in which they'll be taking up this, we firstly have uh, Dr. Prasanna, who will be taking your queries and telling you about the best practices. Dr. Prasanna is currently the Director Admissions at RUAS and uh, he has been associated with education industry for the last 30 plus years. Dr. Prasanna has always believed in leading from the front, which has ensured his strong forte in education space. He's also been contributing and fine tuning the admission process and has enjoyed the entire process throughout. He's of a firm opinion that people who follow the process with right intentions get the best results as there are no shortcuts to success. Second in our uh, uh, today's panelist session will be uh, is Mr. Neeraj Singh, who is a dynamic, forward-looking educational administrator and an institution builder. Currently, he is the director of admissions at Reva University, Bangalore. Uh, his immediate past assessment assignment was as a director, quality assurance, and additional director admissions at JECRC University, Jaipur. He has a deep understanding of university administration ranging from policy matters to day-to-day -to -day functioning. He's taken up a series of innovative measures including the academic and administrative audit, 360 degree, 360 degree feedback mechanism of all stakeholders, implanting OBE learning system, developing assessment method, methodology frameworks for maintaining academic standards as per the latest UGC notifications, and promotion of interdisciplinary teaching and research. Uh, electronics and communication engineering has been the educational backbone apart from being involved in research and consultancy in the research areas of speech processing, language identification and ICD, which in due course of time has led to publication of more than 25 research publications in reputed journals and conferences. And he has also single authored a book on language identification in 2015. Through open and distance education mode, he's gained degree in business law and also holds several diploma and PG diploma in quality assurance, import and export management, and journalism and mass communication. The third panelist for today is Professor K.N. Subramanya, who's the principal at RV College of Engineering, Bangalore. He did his uh, BE in Industrial and Production Engineering from Bangalore University. M he did his MTech in Industrial Management from IITM Chennai. MBA from Karnataka State Open University, Mysore, with HR specialization, and he was ranked fifth. And he's also completed his, uh, he's done his PhD in Supply Chain Management. He has a total 29 years of work experience in teaching, training, and consultancy, research and administration, academic and research expertise, including operation management, supply chain, and logistics management, uh, e-enterprise modeling, simulation modeling, and analysis, decision, anal decision sciences, and applied ergonomics. He has guided more than 100 UG and post-graduation projects. He is actively involved in research and has guided and is still guiding four research scholars. He's published around 50 technical papers in refereed national and international journals and has presented 79 technical papers in national and international conferences. He's executed several funded projects, consultancy assignments, and coordinate and is still coordinating the projects and consultancies worth more than 30 crores at an institution level since three years. He's authored chapters in four books. He's a member of various statutory committees, both at national and state level, and has also served as member of autonomous committees in the country. He's currently serving as a member in professional societies, including ISTE, ORSI, IIMM, QCFI, IIIE, ISSE, CII, and CSI. 
Fourth panelist for today would be Dr. Narsimha, who's Vice Principal at CMR IT. Dr. Narsimha obtained his MSc, MPhil, and PhD all from Bangalore University and in the discipline of chemistry. He's been admirably serving CMR IT since its inception for over two decades now and in various capacities. Besides being an effective teacher himself, he has been contributing to institution in progressively fine-tuning the teaching learning processes, managing the HR part, and steering the administrative activities also. His interests include photochemistry and nanochemistry. His research contributions have found their ways to prestigious journals. He continues to lead a team of researchers working on several funded projects from premier institutes. With over 20 years of experience, he has the ability, he has ability to take up challenging responsibilities and completing the task successfully. His technical acumen and progressive administrative skills contributed in securing coveted MB certification and E plus grade from NAC. Uh, before I hand it over to panelists, uh, we'll just brief you about the last 12 months of Shiksha's journey from April 2019 to 31st March 2020. Shiksha.com is a platform which is an entity of Infoage India Limited, which is an online classified platform. Shiksha observed around 335 million plus page with around 71 million plus active users, where the average time which a user spent on Shiksha per visit was around 2 minutes, 2.2 uh, two, 2 minutes. In the, in the entire year, we had close to 140 plus million student visits. A brief snapshot on our online presence. There are around 30,000 plus colleges listed on Shiksha with almost touching 2 lakh courses and 600 entrance exams. We receive healthy traction on, on our platform because we host detailed and comprehensive information in both domestic and international institutions to enable the right decision for the students. Our platform has 1.75 lakh college reviews which are all verified. We have a QA and a platform, we have ebook and sample papers, we have study abroad counseling services, college and rank predictors, college comparison tools, news and articles and campus connect also. So handing it over to uh, Dr. Prasanna now, uh, who will be taking up this. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Karan and uh, Team Shiksha for uh, giving this opportunity to interact with the aspiring uh, students uh, who is looking forward to their career. And uh, in a situation where we have never been uh, seen uh, such kind of a situation in our uh, lifetime. Having said that, I think I believe and all of us believe that nothing is permanent in this world. I'm sure we as human beings evolved and we have resolved our problems with the adaptability and creativity potential which human being has got. I'm sure these new challenges which are posed on us, maybe whether it is man-made or uh, else kind of a situation, it is definitely giving us adequate opportunities also. Now, these are going to lead us to some sort of a new normal. We never thought of wearing a mask and walking around the streets on a regular basis, but we are doing it. We are experiencing it. Now, it is like every day getting out, wearing a shirt, we are wearing this mask also. And so we started adjusting to the situations. I'm sure this also will pass, but we need to be optimistic and we need to be taking small steps to solve our problems. And uh, in this scenario of whether it is COVID or post-COVID or pre-COVID or whatever it is, the show must go on. So we have to adapt to the situations and then enable ourselves to sort out our difficulties and get ahead with the life. That is what is more important. Now coming to the your topic of today's, that is selection strategies of a college or a university for a particular program, whether it is for BTEC or B or for that matter, any other program, it is a challenge now. I have here, thinking about sharing with you a three-pronged approach as a student who is aspiring to become maybe 
engineering or any other program for that matter. One is that an individual self analysis should be done. I'm sure that most of you have been doing it. I'm sure that you are not thinking uh, just this morning that I want to become an engineer or I want to become something else. You have been thinking about this for a long time. Only thing is that the COVID came in between the last two months back or three months back in, in a post day challenge for us. So how an individual self analysis is to be done. Now, most of the time what happens is that when we are thinking about joining a program, we uh, start talking to our uh, friends or relatives or uh, X, Y, Z, the people around the world, or teachers, or uh, uh, the family, friends, etc., etc. And we ask them that which is the thing. And we tend to show the crowd mentality. You know, we tend to go behind something which is people are following. There is a tendency. They are going. My friend is going. Therefore, I am also going. I think beyond that, we have to. One has to look at what is your potential, your own intelligence level. It is not that you are going to borrow somebody's intelligence and then work on for your career throughout the life so a sort of analysis if there is a tool which is available i'm sure that there are tools available to check your own potential your own intelligence levels i'm sure that everybody has got multiple intelligence it is not that a single intelligence one has got some may be good in maths some may be good in uh, uh, music some may be good in language some may be good in say for example uh, uh, spatial uh, skills or uh, visual skills or some may be having a good interpersonal relationship skills many may not be having all these things in its totality i'm sure that some has a, a little higher uh, point percentage of point uh, for uh, better uh, what do you call intelligence level some may be logically good some may be body kinesthetically excellent so you have to analyze as a aspiring student for any program what is the best intelligence level or the best quality or potential which i have so once you analyze that naturally you are actually half the work is done half the job is done so your next interest area is that is what you have to look at based on your intellect because you have the tool in your hand i know that i am good at logic i am good at mathematical skills i am good at body kinesthetic uh, i am good at that somebody who is a lazy person or who is not able to go around or do any practical kind of a work should not even venture into that he is not fit for something else so you have to look at those kind of a job scenario or a career scenario we can build up i'm i'm sure that other panelists will be having a feel that it can be built up definitely there are certain kind of intelligence can be you can build up but there are basic intelligence levels out there. So you have to look at your intelligence level matching to your interest and the passion. So the next thing which you need to look at is that, am I, what is my real interest in that? Am I good at this particular area? Or am I interested in this? What is my passion? This needs to be looked at. Along with these things, you have to analyze what are the resources available with you. What is my, say for example, when you're picking a, a program to be joined or a college to be selected, or uh, there are a lot of things which you need to see. Means I say that basically you need to have a SWOT analysis done. A kind of a strength to weakness opportunity threat analysis has to be done. Wherein you look at whether what all the resources I have, whether I have financial resources, whether I have whether I can afford to go to this particular institution and then study. Or if I don't have that, how do I manage that? See, these things initially you need to look at that. I'm sure that most of you must be because there will be somebody who will be assisting you in looking at all these things. So a self-analysis is the first thing which I think an aspiring student for any program, whether it is VTEC or VE or any program, has to be taken out. Having done that part of it, now you look at that, okay, now you have to think about, okay, this is, I, I have these problems where there, I still sort out in this mechanism, I will use and I try to uh, find a solution for that. Right. Then the institutional capability analysis is the next one. You have to look at, okay, I have zeroed down to a particular institute or a three or four institution or some number of institutions where I would, A, B, C, where I will, uh, uh, what do you call, preferences are there. Now you are thinking about, I'm sure all the institutions will have more or less similar because nobody is going to put up a institution just like that. Every institution will have basic facilities will be there established. And now you have your passion, you have your interest, you have your potential, you have your capabilities or affordability, etc. Based on that, you have to match your interest area to the institution which is going to provide you the rest of your three or four years of your course or a program. So you have to look at 
fundamentally everybody talks about the infrastructure naturally now in a situation like this today you are not you are not mobile you are you are in red zone means you are completely low you are in orange zone means little movement or uh, green zone means okay little more freedom is there now for the next uh, uh, i don't know how far it is going to be this till 17th anyway it is completely uh, uh, blocked maybe another one month or something it may continue so your physical movement is restricted how do you go and check an institution's infrastructure facilities it is slightly difficult or if you had to wait for you have to wait for a complete lockdown is over and everything is open by then many of the institutions would have already started the admission processes because some are taking the chances and then trying to admit the students early it is a provisional admissions have been given in such scenarios forget about the uh, checking the institution facilities etc etc by the students so in this scenario there are opportunities there are options available you may have to interact with your uh, uh alumni of these institutions or past students or your own uh, schoolmates or college mates would have been joined in this institution in the previous years or etc so take the contacts details and then try and interact with them and get a first hand feedback um, from them or contact the institutions uh, departments professors most of the institutions i'm sure that they have their email ids are published in the websites and other things where in the student can directly interact with the parent uh, students uh, sorry professors and then get a first hand information from them instead of going here and there asking some some people to tell about that institution this institution etc etc also websites most of the websites have been uh having a virtual uh, uh, uh videos or uh, figures pictures or etc will be about the uh, detail so infrastructure that is classrooms laboratories libraries the ict facilities all these things are a must to be checked because you can't you can't run the institution maybe today most of the institutions are taken up the chances of running the classes because we were we stopped in the middle of the semester we stopped in the, uh, the the final semester especially final year students who are supposed to be passing out and then uh, going and picking up their jobs which are offered to them they are stranded but exams are to be held so you can't go on and on uh, this thing ugc has given the new guidelines about the schedules and other things of course we have to abide by that so in this context conducting classes online classes are been uh, going on and uh, the the uh, synchronized and uh, asynchronized methods of teaching and uh, learning is been happening sharing notes and sharing dpts uh, materials videos youtube links etc etc every institute i'm sure that all institutions in the country must be doing the, the thing in uh, uh, schools are also following so that is one aspect of it the next thing is that you have to look at the faculty of course every these days nodal authorities are there agencies are there they have their own controls on the institutions uh, uh, faculty strength and uh, qualifications etc etc i'm sure that faculty is the basic strength of the institution next to it, it is more than the infrastructural part because a good professor makes the day of the child so it makes sense to see that who are the faculties how the faculties have been uh, uh, what do you call uh, structured in in the organization how many of them are with the research background so all these things have to be checked taking to the now these two infrastructure and faculty will deliver something that is the curriculum now how the curriculum is been uh, structured here somebody was talking about the outcome based education of course outcome based education is the in thing now how the ilos have been uh, developed the uh, learning outcomes of the program learning outcomes of the particular uh, uh, course and learning outcomes of the uh, particular subject whether it is been understood by both the teacher as well as the student and how the uh, documentation is been done and whether it is been properly been administered uh, all these aspects have to be checked now we talk about all these kind of things at the college level or the university level it is been done now in many cases sometimes the uh, the curriculums must be updated so whether the updated uh, curriculums have been followed or not whether it is flexible or not whether industry collaborations were there uh, happened in the in the, the curriculum development or not this has to be looked at whether the institutions are offering say for example you have a uh, say a major passion for something so you may take up a particular course whether you have a secondary option whether uh, uh, what do you call a, a minor option is available 
some some of the universities offer uh, open electives because say for example an engineering student is interested in some sort of say for example a design program so whether he can take two three credits in the design program whether option options are given for such kind of uh, flexibility in uh, open elective programs or maybe for uh, uh, for that matter something some interest in the cooking or uh, bakery or confectionery or in that so a uh, multidisciplinary uh, what do you call uh, interdisciplinary facilities and uh, courses and research facilities are available or not? These are the, these are the another, another curriculum as well as uh, uh, the, the uh, teaching learning methodologies which need to be checked. Coming to the next aspect is that we have to look at whether the institution has got international linkages enough. Now today we are talking about people are uh, having a lot of uh, collaborations. Now these institutions, collaborations with uh, uh, international institutions, how it will facilitate both mutual uh, exchanges of faculty and the student. And we understand what is globally happening, which is very, very significant. And it is not in papers, it has to be in practice. So that is to be checked. So you need to understand whether the industry institution, sorry, uh, industry in the international collaborations are in place. And, and moreover, relevant reason contemporary people who will be uh, having their own research advantages come and share their uh, what do you call distinguished lectures etc from uh, other universities which enhances the knowledge that is the faculty's development of the uh, teaching fraternity to deliver the best of the things to the students of this country so similarly we need to see that how best the collaborations can be utilized so that is another aspect which we need to look at that when you are looking for an institution also coming to that next point which i would like to stress upon is the industry institution connect now this is very very important because at the end of the day you are looking forward to a career and a career is based on what you gather at this point of time a mutual uh, understanding between the institution academia and the industry is a very very significant part of the uh, the total delivery of this uh, uh, what do you call uh, uh, educational system so in this uh, connect industry institution connect it will help the institution to give enough of inputs for internship placement support and entrepreneurial support also see there are say, say for example we have a, a institution we have a collaboration with the uh, the uh, the uh, various uh, government uh, organizations so for example government of karnataka is uh, uh, sponsoring with an rtbi kind of a thing that is the uh, uh, incubation center so which takes the projects and uh, helps the students to work on those uh, projects which the government, MSMEs and other uh, kind of institutions which are being provided and the work is being carried out in these kind of incubation centers. So it helps tomorrow, we are looking at not employment seekers, we want to see people to be employment providers so that the nation building is happening based on that. So we have to look at that, how these industry institution connect will help in the process of internships and placements and entrepreneurial development etc now looking at the other aspect now when you come to that is it only the academic aspect plays a thing? so in the total now many of the institutions will be having uh, value-added programs so you need to have enough of uh, uh, space given for enhancing your uh, what do you call other skills upskills so you need to upgrade yourself because in the when you come into the open there is a competitive uh, competition is so high that you you should have a competitive advantage or edge over the other person so as the institution providing you anything value addition to your uh, courses that need to be looked at especially sometimes it, the value addition need not have a credit added to your uh, total program but it may help you in the employment market so you need to look at that whether any value additions are happening in these kind of uh, institutions also you are not here only to do the academics also you need to have your curricular uh, uh, aspects as well as the co-curricular aspects so whether you have in a space for co-curricular uh, uh, what do you call uh, facilities and uh, advantages student life campus life is very very important because these four years or three years or whatever you are spending in an institution you will not get back it so you have to get adequate uh, facilitation from the institution side all this so you have to have a capability analysis of the institution should be done in the second part the third point which i would like to stress upon is that the industry trend analysis so individual to institution to industry now goes the next 
See, for example, if you finish your course, you are going to get actually married to a career for the next 25 years or so. You can't diverse in between. You can't go on changing the career every day. You may change the, uh, what do you call, uh, 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 it's the same industry, but the, you will not change your career. You may, you, because it's not going to be, give you any kind of uh, edge over the next, what do you call, your, in your lifetime. So you have to look at that. Of course, today's tendency is changing job, but that is not uh, uh, yielding you any 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 kind of uh, long term result. So you have to look at your uh, long term uh, uh, situation, and then you have to make a proper analysis about the industry where the industry is progressing next 10 years, 15 years, or 20 years. Because you are normal working, well, maybe 20, 25 years, or for your actual uh, career growth, you are talking about. So where are my what, what kind of industry? So your potential, your institution's capabilities matching to the industry where it is heading towards so you have to fit into that industry so you need to understand which industry is that industry where i will be taking in now today things are just changing innovation is the the, the word innovation is the buzzword every day things are happening so you have to go on updating yourself and finding out what is the trends happening in the industry maybe you talk about say computer science we'll be talking about ai and ml and iot electronics when you talk about iot's and robotics so many things are coming up we, 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 are, we are still struggling with the 5G uh, model, so maybe. So those kind of things, autonomous vehicles, e-commerce advancement, now supply chain management. I think Professor uh, uh, Subramanya will be talking more about uh, supply chain management maybe in this uh, whole scenario about that. Renewable energy. So what are the trends happening in these various areas of uh, the industrial sector? In the multidisciplinary activities, maybe engineering to health sector. Now there, there, there is a need. Because now in the in the in the uh, in a scenario today, social distancing is becoming a part of things. So how engineer can help in the uh, medical uh, services to be given? What what kind of technologies can be there? So you have to look at that the trends and the, the tendencies which are going to happen in the next 10 to 15 years time. So if one can do this this small analysis, I'm sure that you will be equipped better to take any challenges of the coming periods post covid i'm sure that we will settle down and it is not going to be the uh, long term affair and we will get used to the scenarios and we will start with a new life and a new normal thank you so much thank you dr prasanna it was uh, indeed a holistic view of what the student approach should be uh, going ahead while opting for a career choice with with the kind of the pandemic that we are in so it was indeed very insightful and we thank you for your contribution to this. Thank uh, you. So we, we have a few questions for you, but uh, as discussed earlier, we'll be talking about the questions at the end. So uh, sure. Sure. in the meantime, I'll also request the audience to please keep on push, uh, posting their questions in the question section and just address that whom do you want to ask this question to. That would be much more insightful and helpful for us also. Uh, introducing the next panelist for today, Mr. Neeraj Singh, will, who is the Director of Admissions at Reva University, Bangalore, will now be speaking on this topic. Over to you, Neeraj, sir. I think his audio is not... Yes, I'm trying... <clears throat> No. Yes, Mr. Neeraj, you can go ahead now, sir. Thank you, Siksha, for organizing this uh, common uh, platform for the benefit of all the stakeholders. Um, I would like to continue with the tone and rhythm been, uh, being set by my esteemed colleague, Dr. Prasanna. Uh, I would not uh, speak uh, as of now on the uh, sudden outbreak of COVID and other things. Let me, uh, for the benefit uh, of all our viewers, let me uh, uh, speak on to uh, the subject line, which is the for the interest of our students. How to select a uh, college or choose an uh, university post this uh, COVID-19 uh, outbreak or when things get regular. Uh, friends, investing four years of uh, one's life in a good university matters a lot, as how fruitfully one spends this crucial period will determine to a large extent how successful their life is going to be. 
numerous questions dot the mindscape of students as they finish their 10 plus 2 or puc and look forward to the academic season the most important aspect of course is the cutoff or the eligibility from where the game begins now as uh, you must be listening past 20 25 minutes uh, very elaborately on the uh, topics or the agendas how to choose a college uh, let me put those in a very uh, precise point wise manner uh, friends and audiences let me uh, tell you that the three uh, core pillars of choosing a, a college which i feel is uh, say number one the academic life then uh, the college and the student life number two and of course uh, last but not the least the financial aid and the support so these three things uh, i feel uh, is really very important while choosing a college uh, just to give an insight, if I uh, begin with the academics part, uh, now at this scenario in India, a student must be very careful and cautious while choosing uh, the college in terms of the accreditation. What I mean to say is that the AICT or UGC recognition has to be checked at the first point. This I need to uh, speak very loud and clear as because I'm in. Uh, Unfortunately, India has around say more than 300 institutions which are not affiliated or approved by AICT or UGC at this level. Therefore, uh, viewers, the accreditation uh, by AICT or UGC uh, is a, a must to check. The NIRF ranking is, uh, of course, uh, suggested. That is suggested that you check uh, whether the institute has this. Uh, NIRF, uh, it falls in the NIRF top listing category. Then uh, what matters is the quality of teaching. Of course, the four years, you need to uh, keep this as the uh, backbone of your uh, education, career, and the life ahead. So quality of teaching matters. And also therein, when we deep dive into it, the curriculum, and the latest syllabus as per the industry requirements matters a lot. We need to check uh, the uh, structure, status, and the mode uh, of how the curriculum, how the syllabus are being developed and uh, decimated. Also, definitely we should uh, check whether the institute or the university provides the program uh, which we aspire to learn. Selecting a program is altogether a different uh, thing and selecting an institute or a university is altogether a different game. So friends, uh, we should be very careful in uh, choosing the program as well as the institute. And more uh, precisely, the quality of the department of the program. Your particular department's quality matters a lot. Also, the uh, scope and facilities for research, the facilities for teaching, learning, and then finally, the facilities for employability. I mean, uh, the placements. On the way uh, of the four years, the infrastructural facilities plays a greater role. And now uh, in this situation, I'm sure every student or every parent will be thinking about the safety first. So a safe green campus is also a must now. Then again, uh, we should see and understand and uh, critically evaluate the use of innovative ways with regard to knowledge transfer. The scope for specialization, the academic collaborations, the international relevance, the study abroad opportunities, all these factors should be considered.
Thank you so much, Neeraj sir. Uh, are there more things which you want to add over here of how students will be taking up uh, the admissions going ahead with respect to the time? Your voice he's not audible. audible, so he's not yeah. audible. So if somebody can tell him on chat or perhaps as WhatsApp. Mr. Neeraj, we can't hear you, sir. If you could please check your audio. I think uh, I had gone on mute. Uh, sorry for this. The connection is back. No problem, sir. Uh, Please go ahead. He, yeah. He, uh, I was just saying that to summarize in a nutshell, the academic uh, life, which is uh, very important, the accreditation, the quality of teaching, the program availability, the quality of the department of the program, the scope and facilities of research, Student life, when I say, for the student life, uh, the four years you have to be uh, there in. The peers, your friends, all contributes to your uh, personality and the development. So the on-campus living matters. The location, where the institute is located, where an university is located matters a lot. Then again, the sports participation, the recreational facilities, and of course, now seeing at this moment, the most important one, the safety statistics, not for this current uh, situation only, but as a regular uh, method for the university or the institute adopts, the disaster management uh, facilities, the safety statistics needs to be relieved once. The alumni network, how uh, the institute uh, has help the society where are the alumni is uh, working now which are the network institutes across the globe where are the presence of the uh, university in terms of uh, their alumni and nevertheless the campus life the party life and all all the four years which you put that also should have a considerable amount i mean considerable percentage while choosing an institute and i said uh, the financial aid and the support that also uh, needs to be looked at, the program fee, the merit scholarships that should vis-a-vis uh, -vis match with the offerings. And uh, nevertheless, the loan assistance, what uh, the uh, government has come up with, both the state government, central government, and in fact, the UGC uh, with uh, its online uh, method, with the Vidya uh, Siksha portals where you can uh, get this through. All these things have to be uh, looked at once before uh, choosing an university. Also, uh, to be very precise and specific, when I say, uh, particularly at uh, Bangalore, the uh, panel uh, members will be speaking in depth about uh, this things but uh, uh, for the benefit of the viewers let me tell kindly consider the intensity of spirit the intensity of spirit matters a lot while choosing an uh, institute the uh, teaching learning process the research and development all puts together to the intensity of uh, spirit of course this should match with your choice with your intensity and desire of learning you may land up uh, in a better institute, but in a wrong program. You may land up uh, in a program of your choice, but the institute or the university is not of that kind or category. So both should be compared uh, with equal weightage, I feel so. As I said, the campus location, the accessibility, the transportation, the reachability should also be taken into consideration. Then again, uh, the diversity on campus. As I said, the peer learning, uh, the uh, 
support and the presence of our friends will matter a lot on our personal life. Therefore, diversity on the campus is, is important, much, much important. And uh, when I say particularly for my university, for example, uh, say Reva University caters more than 16,000 students who are here with uh, some uh, 34 UG programs, undergrad programs, 26 PG programs, and 17 doctoral programs. So, kindly consider the diversity on campus also as an uh, yardstick. Then again, uh, one of the most important ones which you must be uh, looking at is the placements, the training uh, provided, the skill development, international relations, and the global collaborations. Just to add, uh, Reva has around uh, 300 companies uh, to its network. The Corporate Advisory Board of Reva, which is an active sale and meets uh, the voice is not audible again at this stage apart from the uh, holistic development of yours in the uh, variety of campus clubs, organizations, and the college life, the digital campus, the excellent online uh, teaching learning facility, the online uh, uh, methods of uh, knowledge dissemination, knowledge transfer plays a greater uh, role. This is not because of only this COVID situation or this sudden outbreak. This is our future, and we must accept it that the uh, coming generation will be more focused onto a digital campus and onto the uh, perfect online teaching learning methodologies. Also, just to add, uh, here at Reva University, what we have is the online tab-based exam. Not for this current situation, but we have the system in place past a couple of years. And here the assessment is being made by the online uh, tab-based examinations. Now, uh, at the verge, I would like to add that for students who are also looking for the, uh, housing opportunities, that is the residential facilities, the hostels uh, plays again a greater role because you have to spend uh, a greater part of your life uh, staying in the hostel than in the classrooms. So learning out of the classroom, learning uh, beyond the classroom is much, much important. And we should uh, give this a greater weightage and i said uh, financial aid options also uh, need to be ruled uh, relieved at again uh, to conclude my words i would say uh, that reva university university for your holistic developments uh, provides all uh, which is necessary uh, for you to achieve better heights be it in terms of the latest uh, syllabus, academic curriculum, the industry tie-ups, the corporate uh, connects, the placements, uh, the campus life, and the uh, 360 uh, degree uh, learning within the classroom, beyond the classroom, the perfect hostel life with superb uh, uh, meal offerings, mouth watering, uh, food facilities for all the students of all the regions. Also, nevertheless, the university has its own um, loan assistance methods, which you can uh, address that at the moment. Just to uh, add that, uh, as I said, uh, knowledge should also be seen as a method of uh, research and what are we giving uh, to the society. At this moment, the sudden outbreak of COVID-19 caused by the SARS-CoV-2 uh, coronavirus has posed a major challenge on all nations of the world. The health ministries across the world have been appealing for various possible to control this pandemic as well as the uh, patient care. In this regard, India, the largest democratic, 
democratic country, second largest populated, is fighting hard and is so far the best in controlling the widespread. But as the lockdown eases, it is expected, it is expected that there might be a large population which may come under the grip of this pandemic. As a nation, the government has given a call uh, to prepare or to support uh, in all means possible as an institute, as an university. Uh, in this regard, Reva University has also come up with a low cost ventilator to support the life during critical conditions. Many institutions, including major uh, automotive uh, manufacturers, have come forward to create emergency ventilators for this crisis. I think, uh, Reva University also has developed uh, a low cost emergency ventilator and named it as Jiva This Jiva has been developed using locally available and locally made engineering components. The technical specifications of Jiva Setu are in part of the standards defined by the national and international healthcare bodies. This is just, I have said, to give a flavor to all my viewers that Reva caters to the latest needs uh, of the society. And this is because of the skilled manpower at Reva, the uh, skilled focused curriculum, the industry uh, tie-ups and networks, which we have. These are all made at the campus. So friends, as I said, kindly uh, have a look on all the uh, points which carries equal weightage. Uh, just the uh, thing that you can put somewhere at this place number one and the other agenda at number two. That will be the only difference, I think so. Just uh, with these words, I would like to wind up my uh, session and I would uh, like to listen my other uh, distinguished panelist members. Thank you. Thank you, Neeraj sir. Uh, thank you so much for your uh, suggestions and uh, your words of how Reva University is coping up with all these things. In fact, we have one or two questions for you with respect in these regards. However, as discussed earlier, we'll be taking up the questions at the end. Uh, now, I'll be inviting Professor Subramanya, uh, who is the principal of RV College of Engineering, to take forward the discussion. Uh, Professor Subramanya, over to you, sir. Yeah, hello. Are you able to hear? Hello. Yes, yes. you are. <clears throat> able to hear, sir? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, good evening to all of you. Uh, first of all, let me thank uh, Siksha for giving us this opportunity to share our thoughts among the parents and the students. And I'm sure uh, if there are four to five people from uh, different institutions, uh, whatever the points uh, which have been told by them. Uh, will also be by me, but I thought uh, listening to the two speakers, I'll take a different uh, note altogether. That uh, first of all, uh, uh, this is a time generally every year, uh, maybe starting from February going up to August. I'm sure the parents and the students are always uh, have a lot of anxiety, and uh, because of the COVID, even the institutions this year has got anxiety. I think that's a starting point. So from there, what happens is uh, uh, now uh, what college to select, what branch to select is a big problem because uh, many times what happens is different people in the society give different opinions and uh, uh, students are confused, parents are confused. I think at least in cities, there's overflow of such information. So how to uh, screen this information and go ahead is the most important aspect and uh, because of this COVID, let me also assure parents and students, don't be too much anxious because uh, we were supposed to start in August all our uh, classes. Mostly we will be starting from September. I think that's the only difference which will be there. And you may have to bear with all these kinds of tensions for another three months. I'm sure as of now, your status is that you have completed all your PUC examination except English. I'm sure uh, when the situation becomes certain, I think uh, immediately they'll conduct the English examination. But the question is, uh, we are all uh, waiting for all the entrance exams to be taken. So this is where I would like to start with uh, that. Uh, I am sure this year, at least all the entrance examinations will be coming in the similar month only. Either it could be June or July. So uh, which exam to take, which not to take 
is a big question mark for all the parents and the students i am sure parents doesn't want to leave any chance so they keep on taking all the exams so my sincere uh, suggestion for all the uh, parents and the students should be that uh, let us try to see uh, first of all try to know what is the passion of your uh, son or a daughter i think this is very very important generally uh, you ask anybody in the society today i am sure given a chance everybody wants to take computer science i think that is how the bangalore has been there for last 5 to 10 years uh, but suddenly uh, you may not be getting a computer science seat in a good college uh, wherever you want it so then are you going to sacrifice the college are you going to sacrifice the branch i think this is a uh, question mark all of the parents should definitely have until you get a seat so my sincere suggestion to all of the students particular is that don't have any a specific branch uh, kind of a mindset with you please be open minded because today what happens is uh, computer is a super layer uh, which would be needed for all the branches of engineering i am sure that uh, my pa fellow panelists will accept that uh, by chance you don't get computer science what next if you don't get that let us say electronics what next i think if i got three to four uh, kind of all the alternatives with you i am sure that uh, you have a better college and a better uh, uh sacrifice in sometimes a branch but uh, you may ask is the college important or the branch is important i think according to me both are important if both have to be important what is your role i think you are supposed to take this entrance examinations very seriously uh i think you have an opportunity now that you study very well because uh, instead of taking 10 to 20 examination can you see what are the three four best exams you can take and perform better instead of taking all the exams and landing up with say 4500 rankings everywhere you may not get a good college as well as a good branch so in that way i request all of you to focus mostly on because uh, cet was one such examination uh, which is conducted by state government and committee is another examination where the bulk of the admissions happen and if somebody is in the higher plane of reference you can look into iits neat examination lot of such things are there so my sincere request is that particularly for the parents uh, since all the exams come during a similar time uh, you try to assess your son or daughter by chance uh, if you uh, son or daughter is not up to taking the je examination please let them not take it i think it is as simple as that i see many people taking the examination and they're not doing well there they're not doing the cet and format ke also well there so stick to two to three best examinations you feel comfortable you feel where your ward has to study i think this is my sincere request to all the parents and the students to uh, look into uh, when you are selecting in fact uh, <coughs> writing the examinations then once you write the examination i think now it is in with your hands uh, within your hands that you get a good marks let us say your rank is less than 100 you get the best college you get the best branch you get let, let us say less than 1000 rank then you may get a best college but branch may try to be satisfied let us say somebody gets 8000 9000 rank then you have to sacrifice in the college you have to sacrifice in the branch also so i think this is the first another two months i am sure you have time please work out very well do best i think everybody should try to get good marks because some exams here are intelligent oriented some entrance exams are memory based so you should know how to handle both in a different way don't be over confident because uh, you already written puc examination and already the time lapse has been done at least one and a half two months i am not sure whether you remember all the things whatever you have already studied so i think yeah. this is the right time for you to put extra effort to study the entrance exams very well i think that's a, that's my first sincere request to all of you please do the exams very well because without that you talk about a selection of a best college or a ideal college will not happen to you i think the first stage is with you only so please make sure that you do the entrance exams very well so when once you do that then also try to look into what is your passion uh, is your passion computer science is your passion mechanical or is your logic is good your physical experimentation methodologies are good what is good in you please try to find out don't blindly select if my neighbor has selected my cousin has selected my classmates have selected they may have a different kind of a logic but your logic could be something different so your logic may be in terms of let us say electronics his logic may be towards mechanical so please uh, don't try to compare here anybody i think you have to compare yourself so please look into what is your passion 
the first phase. Second phase is uh, when you are trying to select a branch, please make into clusters. I think that's my sincere request to all of you. Let us say what these clusters all about. Clusters could be computer science, information science, information technology will be in one basket. Then electronics and communication, electronics and telecommunication, electronics and <coughs> instrumentation, electronics and telecommunication, all these will be in one cluster. And mechanical, industrial engineering, aerospace, aeronautical, mechatronics, automotive engineering will be in one cluster. You take chemical and biotechnology will be in another cluster. And uh, another cluster will be civil engineering, architecture engineering, transportation engineering. So you please uh, first make into these clusters and see where your passion, the interest lies. And according to me, if somebody doesn't get, let us say, mechanical engineering, can you take some branch in that cluster so that your passion could be satisfied? So please make the next step is to make the clusters. So once you make the cluster, match your passion. Because I have seen uh, for many years that the students, since everybody is joining computer science, they also join computer science. Uh, but finally, after first year, they realize that that is not their passion. Or they're not in a position to have a good logic and they're not in a position to do well in the examinations. So in that way, please, uh, I also request the parents that please uh, sit for some time and try to map what is the passion. I'm not saying you should not take computer science or electronics, but if you're really interested in that, you can always uh, look at it. But uh, I have seen this year again, many students have already booked for, let us say, chemical engineering, somebody wants to do it. So they've already made up their mind. So please have some plan A, plan B action so that uh, your selection would be very much easier. So that's the second point I would like to uh, give it to you. Then the next uh, is, uh, according to me, whichever branch you select, I think you should do the best in that branch. I think that should be your focus. Today, there are so much opportunities in every field that if you are the best, you'll get it. Otherwise, uh, if you're a mediocre, uh, in taking the best branches also, you may not still do well. So please uh, make the best advantage uh, and do the best in whatever you select. And uh, uh, I would like to also inform you that you should be definitely open-minded. At this age, don't get stuck to uh, one uh, point of view. Please uh, have an open-mindedness and uh, learning is very, very important. I'm not going to uh, go into the details of what my friends have told, how to select a college uh, today if you want to select. Uh, <coughs> for example, if you ask somebody, are we college of engineering, what do you select? They say there are placement opportunities are good and innovative teams are very good in my college. But in some other college, let us say, research may be very good. In some other college, industry institute interaction may be very good. So if you take the good colleges in uh, at least in Bangalore city, I'm sure we are all on almost all on the equal race or uh, equal kind of uh, provisions, whatever my colleagues have told. So <clears throat> keep those things in mind. It, it could be in terms of the, uh, let us say, teaching learning process, research uh, facilities, or could be industry institute interaction, placement opportunities, which college is giving you the uh, provision for the overall uh, uh, kind of a uh, personality development. Please look into the holistic development. It is not just only a branch wise uh, performance. It could be a holistic development. Who are all the people who are going to give you uh, co-curricular and extracurricular activities? What are the provisions given? So please keep these things in mind. And I'm sure uh, uh, today's students and parents are uh, actually very much forward when compared to us. I think they definitely look into the all the rankings, all the websites. So please uh, don't go anywhere through the third parties. I request all of you to please go to the colleges, <clears throat> meet the students, meet the faculty, or go to some uh, uh, published reports which are given already. So based on this, if you can select, uh, I think uh, uh, your choice would be better and you can perform well. And uh, don't worry too much about the placement because uh, in another four years, economy will not be the same it's going to definitely change. So you are going to get job only after four years. So don't think uh, based on your uh, situation of a senior today, don't uh, think that for this particular branch, the placement is not there and things of that sort. So these are some of the uh, thoughts which I have in mind. So your initial job would be to study very well for the entrance examinations and then uh, rest all will follow and you have some more time. I request all the parents also to please take care of their children very well because these are all pressure examinations. So I request all of the students also to have a regular discipline in the habits before taking the examinations. Uh, don't be overburdened, don't be over anxious also. I think everything will be all right. And I think I wish you all the best uh, uh, for the next three to four months of your performance so that uh, you can uh, select the good call in the good branch. Uh, I think that's from my side, uh, thank you very much.
Thank you so much, Professor Subramanian. In fact, uh, we had a query, a question meant for you on the same lines, which I believe you already answered. And the question said, like, what is the scope of which branch in future and how should a student opt for a certain branch? Like, you gave us a cluster approach to finding the courses, the appropriate courses. I believe students will take some in. If the students have any more questions on it uh, with respect to the same part of it, we'll obviously take it up at the end of the session. Sure. Now, sure. Uh, I'll be handing it over to Dr. Narsimha. Uh, he, he wants to share a few slides with the audience. Uh, Dr. Narsimha, am I right? Yeah, I shared with these slides with you. Just to... yeah, yeah. Only one slide. Yes. Yeah. Good evening to all of you. And good, good evening, evening to all who are, part who are participating in this today webinar. Hope all the parents and students enjoying their time at home and they're safe. All of us understand that we're all in a very crucial stage and also tremendous pressure. And the stage, what I'm saying is, mostly we are finding it difficult to finalize the courses and the colleges. Just now, Subramanian has very clearly mentioned. Mainly, we have to focus on entrance examinations, which are approaching now. That is the main focus as on today. And other panelists also mentioned most of the things. So my speech will become very short, maybe five minutes, because everything already covered by three important people. I always recommend only one single strategy to any student. That is, as Burman Nasser said, it is always a passion. The student should have a passion to finalize the college or whatever it is. So student has to must always go with the passion single point strategy. Ideally, the passion, once you select, you have to pursue it day and night, be it engineering, medicine, commerce, etc. I hope always success is hard work that all of you agree. Mostly when you working hard, all of you are ready, but only thing is you need a machine where you need to support. That machine is the college. I feel college plays a very important role in every student's life. Then the question comes, which college I need to select? That is the major question comes in all our minds, including uh, any person who is in rural area or in urban area, always every parent and a student struggling to find a good college. That is the major objective of any parent now. And it's highly impossible for any parent to visit all the institutions to find out what is there, what is not there. That's one thing. And second thing, it is highly impossible for any parent to go through all the websites which are available in the all the website uh, information and all is highly impossible. So what I feel is, student when they want to choose the institutions, mainly they may have to look for some quality assurance certificates, which I always feel better. For example, the institutions whether are accredited by NAC with the worst grade, and secondly, the institutions are accredited by NBA or not or the institutions are ranked by NIRF or not, or the other regions. That is a better way to finalize the college, which one is the better, which is not the... I cannot say all the institutions are not bad. Every institution doing the better. But in that, you have to choose one of the best means. You have to go with these type of finalizing the certifications. In short, I would also mention, any student, when you say the best institution, again, you have to find out which is the institution promoting innovations, which is the institution supporting you the creativity, which is the institution which is supporting your projects, your ideas. So all those things can be seen only by these type of certifications and we can find it. And also I feel all the students nowadays are very creative. So as all of you know, the economic situation as in today, it's worst as in today. So we should convert this into a a profession with this we have to convert into an opportunity to get better opportunities and we have to make this as useful thing and where you can do better innovations so select the institution who got the compatibility <laughs> to make your career brighter many of you guess uh, the engineering provides solutions i hope one more thing which i would like to mention most of the students have a question what is engineering about first of all so in such case Engineering is a, provides a solution to real-time problems. 
they work in wide range of careers from developing a solar water pump for a farmer to design a rover to moon on mars i feel anyone who has skills to apply mathematical logic through coding designing electronic circuits robotics electric vehicles nanotechnology has a bright future so based on this based on your passion based on your interest you can choose the branch whichever you want always choosing a college and choosing a branch becomes more important so if you select a wrong branch even though you are in a good college definitely your future will be not much bright so better always I request all of you to choose a better college with the better branch so that you can enjoy your future so to summarize whatever the panelists already mentioned only few things which i would like to summarize always look for the academic activities which happen in the institution as number one and second thing is what are the accreditations the institutions got and nowadays infrastructure infrastructure means not only the buildings now i think all of you know it infrastructure also becomes very important now because mostly online classes will happen in future look for teacher strength that means the quality of teachers and approachability as many parents mentioned approachability also very important for the institutions and as they mentioned some of the panelists also mentioned incubation centers and center of excellences placement division how it works all those things will be considered for the selection of college and also you may have to look for hostel facilities how it works and placement records and percentage of placements happening in the institutions as supermanes sir said we should not look for the placements as in today but record of the placement how it is going on with the institutions you may also look at that small part now and targeting better player uh, always you have to prepare for better certifications and finally you have to so always look for an institution where it is safe and secure with the small things i would like to wind up my speech thank you for the opportunity given by siksha thank you so much uh, dr narsimha in fact uh, i mean this was very insightful given that majority of us speak oh, thank you not opting for the branch and uh, the specialization which the student wants to look at uh, dr narsimha we have a question for you uh, by one of the attendees uh, sir yes. the question says that how will the institutes now be ensuring that social distancing distancing is being observed in the colleges and universities and institutes going ahead uh, any yeah, special see, measures which you will be planning for or uh, in fact this question is open for all the panelists so what what all has come up in the strategical side of institutes when we talk about this particular aspect of social distancing <clears throat> okay i can uh, answer this question uh, yes, so we already see that uh, the social distancing among the youngsters is the most toughest i think that's how uh, the colleges have been postponed for another next one month so as a college i think uh, we are planning to have one student per room in a hostel and uh, while conducting the examination we want to put instead of 40 in a room we'd like to put 20 in a room and uh, uh, all said and done this education has to be for youngsters because we may provide all the facilities as long as they don't follow i think we'll have an issue we have been seeing even in the society today that uh, many people are all educated but we are not following it so i am sure all the colleges because of the statutory requirement of the government they are already made lot of arrangements <coughs> in terms of let us say sanitization mask everything individuals have to do it but when they come to the college I think uh, all the four colleges where we are were here, all these are very big colleges only. I think space is not a problem for us. So I'm sure uh, uh, we can take care of it. Uh, students or parents need not have to worry about the social distancing. In fact, we have more concern for the students. So in that way, definitely we'll take care of them. But at the same time, we will also be educated that uh, they have to follow the uh, social distancing. I think that's my answer to this question. Well, also the research just to follow even though we create just to add, just to add what uh, professor subramaniam said yes mr neeraj please yeah uh, just to add uh, what our uh, distinguished professor said i would say that uh, um, definitely uh, the space and distance is not a matter but how we um, utilize it is really crucial 
going uh, forward onto it reva has made uh, demarcations on all the uh, uh, footways and other uh, landscapes for uh, the equidistant walking uh, kind of thing even the visitors the students faculties and all the uh, human resources whoever walks in in the university will follow uh the directions as uh, led by our honorable uh, prime minister the do uh, gaj ke duri and the one meter distance and again uh, for the examinations if i say uh, reva has gone uh, into an uh, absolutely uh, digital mode the examinations will be uh, con uh, conducted uh, in a digital mode through an uh, online cap based examinations or, or other uh, remote crafted examinations these measures are taken Uh, respecting the guidelines of the regulatory uh, bodies the regular sessions of the students have been postponed up till uh, june and in fact the second session will begin only from first uh, 1st of august uh, nevertheless even if it begins we will uh, try to uh, make a uh, sequence or a system wherein we will have half of the students uh, sitting in the classroom and the other half uh, attending through the uh, webcam likewise we can make alternative day arrangement or something of the sequence uh, in the week uh, to come so that everyone uh, has uh, the oppor equal opportunity for the knowledge transfer uh, respecting uh, the health issues and the current uh, scenario that is all thank you neeraj so uh, dr narsimha you want to add something yeah yeah, yeah. 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 can i answer Yes, Doctor Nasima, please. I'll come back to Doctor Prasanna. Yeah. Yeah. See, addition to whatever the facilities we create, we may have to create awareness among the students to follow the norms. Until the students uh, they don't follow, definitely it becomes very difficult for us. Whatever we create, as CMR group of institutions, definitely we are also doing all the norms as per the government. Whatever norms led by the government, we are following. By the time classes starts, we'll arrange what are necessary requirements for the normal classes to run. this uh, this is a big challenge actually because the students staying in the hostel and uh, the, the the day scholars will be having their own separate issues and as uh, dr subramanya mentioned about that these we will be having classes uh, maybe staggered classes or uh, uh, separate time tables and other things so batch wise and different things self discipline and the student has to have that self discipline and understand and it is going to be a big challenge because even if after the class hours it's when they get excited it becomes so i feel that Uh, as a social norm, social distancing, self-discipline also should be imposed on uh, <laughs> those kind of <laughs> situations. Right. Uh, in addition to this, Dr. Vishnu, in fact, uh, there are a few concerned parents who are attendees in our session, and one of them wanted to ask you about how would the hostel facility uh, be workable, given that the students generally don't get single rooms in the earlier stages of their degree. So this question was asked by Mr. Anand, who is a parent. and and is concerned about his kids admission uh, and again uh, this question was meant for dr prasanna dr prasanna if you can just add on to the no this yeah. this is a concern actually we are actually working the student affairs department of we working on the mechanism wherein the students from uh, see as a uh, earlier one of panel members it's a diverse institution because we have students from all over the country so when they are coming into the campus uh, all, all of a sudden all of them together we have to make sure that they have been provided with extra facilities and uh, provisions of accommodations for some time uh, it will maybe a few months more after they reopen so that we are the student affairs section is working on that we will be looking into the best possible way of accommodating all the students because once they are asked to come back to the campus we have to give them all the facilities for them to maintain all the social distancing uh, etc we are working on that all right all right thank you sir uh um, we have the next question for uh, dr narsimha dr narsimha yes, there is a question which says uh, is cmrit under cmru or vdu uh, how do you address that now what's your take on it yeah and under cmr cmrit is under vtu it's not affiliated to cmru as of now we have got two engineering colleges one is under cmru another one is under vtu the cmrit which is at uh, white field for vtu the other cmr in uh, cmr engineering college is under with the airport road which is under cmr university 
All right. Uh, and in fact, Dr. Narasimha, there's another question which has just uh, popped up, uh, which says about how do you monitor the student progress and how do you communicate the same to the students? Yeah, it's one of the best thing what we are doing from CMR. The monitoring is continuously happening at the institution level. For every student, most of the colleges will do this. Every uh, faculty will have 20 students for their monitoring, mentoring. Addition to mentoring, we have got one more approach called SDR, Student Transformation Record, which we maintain from beginning. So from when they join for the institution, we start recording his progress. Finally, for the student when he's going out, definitely will have a our complete report, how we studied from beginning to end. Not only with respect to mascot, his behavior, his aptitude, his uh, soft skills, soft skills, everything we record, and finally we'll get a report at the end how we progress throughout his course. That's one of the unique thing which we are doing. And communication, when you ask, which is completely going through through the mentors, and also we have got a online platform wherein we are informing all the parents about the safety of a student and also his progress, how it is happening at the institution. So this communication channel is very clear from the teacher to the parent. So that parent is completely informed every day what's happening for the child and how he's happy at the institution. That's what the communication happens over end. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, Dr. Subramanya, uh, we have a question for you wherein there's a student who's confused about which branch to opt for and uh, what should be the right parameters of selection of a branch? I mean, this person doesn't know about himself as such is what he's trying to ask in the question. So can you enlighten us on what should be the student's thought process in such cases when the student is confused or is not aware about his passion on the whole? Okay, fine. So the first important parameter for any engineering program would be mathematics. So let him try to find out whether he's strong in mathematics or not. Because uh, we feel that uh, there is a thing in the society stating that for some branches there is there is need more mathematics for some other branch they don't need it. So I can, according to me, if a person is not strong in uh, fundamentals of mathematics and physics, which is the fundamental principles, I think that's the first point he has to take care. And uh, for the, the student who would like to take a branch, is it uh, a process driven or a logically very strong? We can look into a process oriented branches. Uh, could be in terms of uh, computer science, information science, information technology, chemical engineering, biotechnology. All these are all these things are process oriented. But a student is most interested in let us say making a product physically because some people uh, believe that something is believing. So they are very uh, good hands on. So if a student wants to be definitely on the hands on a physical product, it's better to take either mechanical, aerospace. Electronic, electronic instrumentation in such other branch. So these are the two things I'd like to say that uh, uh, mathematically it should be very strong and other than that, whether it's a process oriented person or a, because I'll give a simple example that uh, uh, some of our students take a field service examinations. So they don't want to, they want to do engineering to get the analytical skill, but his passion is to become a civil servant. So then other day we have one uh, talk uh, to our students was telling that so if you want to go to civil engineering you should be a generalist engineer you need not be a too much on the specific on the technical aspects so let him try to have some two three plans for himself that uh, whether you want to grow technically strongly or techno managerial kind of a thing or to service society in a better way or you want to go for a startup i think there are four to five options for the students today so uh, parents and the students have to sit together i'm sure that it's too early for them to decide but I'm sure the present students are much better than us. I think they also have uh, that eagerness to know things. So let them sit for some time and try to know what is his passion first of all. Is it product oriented, a logic oriented, uh, a software oriented and things of that sort. I think uh, if he can sit for one or two days, talk to good people, he can uh, make out what branch of engineering he can try to tell. Right. And so any suggestions for parents in these tough times, Dr. Subramanian? Uh, the suggestion for parents would be uh, that, uh, so please don't uh, force your children uh, because we have seen many times at least uh, uh, 10 to 15 students who joined, let us say, uh, computer science in our college 
and suddenly after one year they find that uh, the, his line is not that uh, he was interested in something different so i request uh, please sit with your children and try to find out what they want to do first because the, the present generation is not like us whether we like it or not we used to listen to the others and uh, follow the path but today after two years also student doesn't like a branch he is ready to quit and go so in that way uh, parents uh, should not take any chance with respect to that so please uh, uh, sit with them and try to find out by chance if he is not interested in engineering let us say uh, please don't force them because there are a lot of other things could be in a liberal arts science is there commerce is there and uh, so please look into that that is one suggestion and also one more suggestion could be that uh, uh, don't try to uh, pressurize too much this is particularly for the mothers uh, because they feel uh, his son or daughter should get the best marks every time uh, but the capability of a student is also very important so please uh, make sure that don't pressurize them they themselves are already in tension so let us try to provide a congenial atmosphere for them so that uh, the house atmosphere becomes very important under such situations and try to go on motivating them if you can motivate them i think uh, i think these are two two things i would like to give as a suggestion to the parents uh, thank you so much uh, with, uh, with, i will add one more point with the professor subramanya you better be a good listener rather than a talker to the children i think they will have a lot of things to talk because when you keep talking they will be only listening and they will not be able to talk their mind i think it's very important as professor subramanya said that it is better we listen to them because they also have ideas they also have some aspirations we have to inspire them with uh, their own aspirations to be achieved thank you great thank you dr prasanna and thank you dr uh, subramanya for uh, insights around this topic uh, dr prasanna we have a question for you uh, by ms neha who wants to check on how will the students be assessed if the digital education is accepted in colleges and universities in the, in this uh, during this uh, see normal uh, situation we will be having our own uh, continuous evaluation systems that is the, the cee we call it as we have a, a, a term examinations which will be having uh, what do you call two terms examinations and assignment submission which is again a, Uh, digital uh, submissions which we will be checking through the process of uh, the assignment submission there will be so as again uh, as i was mentioning in the beginning there will be some kind of uh, uh, critical thinking is important in every assignment part so when we talk about the outcome based we are looking for uh, the as uh, as the professor subramanya mentioned the problem solving is very important uh, uh, by uh, any student because if they are not able to solve the problems of this society by any education i don't think it makes any sense because they should be able to deliver back to the society as solutions of the problem so in the assignments which we are giving we in a, in, a, in a ramaya university when we give the assignments we ensure that one of the questions which will be a typical question which naturally think make them think out of box so it cannot be a standard a typical uh, control c control v answer so it has to be uh, uh, out of box thinking and his own creativity has to be so that is something which we we make sure that the students all go through that process of assessment and there will be in the end again it is a semester and examination what we uh, we we plan for that and there is a weightage given to both uh, semester and as well as uh, for the control uh, continuous evaluation uh, examinations all right i like that Please, please. I'd like to add to that. Uh, uh, like say, uh, now everybody is uh, because of the uncertainty in the system. Everybody has started looking to digital education, and uh, is it going to become a new norm? Is a question for everybody, including us. But let me also tell you, digital education is not going to totally replace our conventional education. So I think this uh, every one of us should understand because there is a lot of physical experimentations people have to do. Then there is a lot of uh, hand holding which is needed by a faculty members so after post uh, post covid i feel that uh, uh, at least 30 to 40% of our education system may become digital but still 50 to 60% will be hand holding because engineering is doing so if i don't do a product i cannot show everything on the computer so in that way the hardware part of it uh, still it should be manual only and uh, so people need not have to worry uh, is it going to become online totally 
I don't think a long way to go for that. And it will be definitely 30 to 40 percent could be digital because we have also learned through this total process. But the remaining 50 to 60 percent would be hands on making the product, then uh, operating the machines, operating the circuits. I think this is the thing for an engineer which they should not forget. Also, also, sir, uh, there is a in the Guru Shishya, there is an emotion attached to the thing. So we need to have a face to face interaction. <laughs> Generally, the learning makes 100 percent. Whatever Correct. digital mode we use. Correct. Absolutely, sir. Uh, in fact, in this digital world, uh, we are right. We were initially talking to around 120 odd unique users who were attending this webinar, and all your contributions helped uh, uh, in whatever form of suggestions you gave them. Uh, we'll take up three more questions. Audience are requested to just jot them down uh, with respect to whom you want to ask this particular question. And uh, there are a lot of questions coming around placements and all uh, stuff, but it is better uh, recommended if we ask questions on a, on a uh, specific topic rather than a very uh, overviewed or an open topic on the whole. Uh, the next question is for Mr. Neeraj. Uh, Mr. Neeraj, there's, there are students, uh, in fact, a parent has asked us this, that how do they ensure that the students' fear of traveling to distance places is kept under control because a lot of times students may have a different psyche of traveling down to different different places so the parents are worried the students are worried especially during the, the kind of the times that we are in so how would you want to address this so thanks karan i think uh, this is a serious question uh, for all of us uh, on this panel in fact uh, uh, thank you for putting here forum this will be helpful for all the views that uh, serious uh, fear for traveling to the distant places. Uh, what, uh, as an university, what we have come up with is absolutely uh, non human touch admissions process. The 100% uh, digital admissions process. Then again, uh, from uh, right from the uh, filling of the applications form to uh, acceptance of the final uh, admissions letter, the entire process can be done uh, remotely, safely. And then uh, now there is absolute no need uh, to hurry and panic. I would like to uh, agree with uh, Professor Subramaniam who said that we need, we have uh, uh, fortunately received, I mean, it's like a blessing in disguise that we have two months time uh, for preparation of the entrance examinations. So uh, it's better uh, student can uh, utilize the time for the preparation. In fact, most of the examinations can now be obtained online. Even our uh, the entrance examination Reva CET for engineering that can be uh, appeared online. That is a uh, remote proctored examinations. Uh, the entire process is online. Even if even if uh, anyone comes uh, at our campus. There is a thermal scanner that is again a non human intervened process. An automatic uh, thermal scanner uh, scans uh, the body temperature and then uh, gives a ticket pass for each one of us to enter. There is a uh, unique uh, um, setup made as a uh, small quarantine setup for students or faculty or whoever who are uh, the regular members of the university and are coming from a distant places to rejoin even for them the setup has been uh, made there has been uh, an uh, small immediate arrangement for a separate mess and uh, fooding food court facilities for all the students for uh, all the members uh, within the campus who needs to be uh, addressed differently or needs to be quarantined so i think the university is taking each and every uh, measures possible to address uh, this epidemic uh, within the campus and nevertheless, I would again agree to my other distinguished panelist that self-discipline will uh, rule all these things. I would end up with saying that do not panic. Have your time. All the CBSC boards, uh, authorities, the UGC, and everyone has said that uh, the admissions uh, will begin, uh, say, around by July end or something uh, of that matter. So it's time just evaluate the colleges take your decision uh, it's a blessing in disguise so uh, be careful in choosing the next step 
and just uh, feel free uh, to walk in any of the campus. Uh, I think everyone is taking the extra mile to keep uh, human life safe and safer. So thank you. Thank you, Neeraj sir. Uh, Dr. Narsimha, uh, we yes. have uh, a question for you which talks about the general process of admission. It's like the last year people used to visit the campus before taking admissions, have a good look at the infrastructure facilities, hostel facilities, and all XYZ facilities that were involved. But given the situation, the travel of the students students won't be easy and in fact the travel of the parents also won't be easy going ahead as we proceed in the next few months how do you see things moving with respect to this in fact i would want the, all the panelists to add a point uh, on the same question here because that's a question which may be of supreme importance going ahead yeah as earlier even i told also i mentioned it's really impossible for any parent or any student to visit all the campuses now especially now so mostly they may have to go through the uh, main things about website uh, reference and also talking to somebody said already talking to teachers because all the contact details are available on the websites so they can talk to teachers they can talk to alumni and also they can go through the reviews so based on those things they add up the thing and finally they can select few colleges before they join that's one thing which i would like to mention for this Okay, uh, Dr. Prasanna, if you want to add something here on how would the travel? I, I'm sure most of the universities there uh, see uh, a lot of videos and other things have been uploaded in their websites with uh, infrastructure facilities and other things. The students actually have a virtual look on to these kind of things in the university. Only thing is that the physical walk into the institution and uh, personal interaction with the uh, faculty or a student, uh, existing student or an alumni will become a little difficult till this lockdown is uh, in in place. Otherwise, I think most of the universities have uh, the, the, I think it is not, uh, it is authentic uh, photos or videos or all, all these things will be there in the websites. In the digital mode, they will be able to have a look at it. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Prasanna. Uh, Professor Subramaniam, if you want to add something here. Uh, actually, add some uh, yeah. let me tell yeah. you, uh, this uh, looking into this campus and all is only a temporary phenomena. I don't think any parent students are going to make decision based on only this. So I think they would have already done their exercise for the last two years. And uh, for any good college, there is no need because they have to get good rank and get the seat, that's all. So other than that, uh, they need not have to worry because today a lot of things are available. But there is no need for them to physically come and see as other uh, panelists have told me. But uh, I'm sure that uh, the college selection would have already, already been done by the parents. But only thing is, their uh, boards have to score good uh, percentage of the ranks. I think they're waiting for that. So I think that's on my side. Uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, there is a lot of time, sir, let me tell you. It just uh, may starting now, June, July, August, because their sessions are going to start somewhere in September only. Yes. So there are three more months time, and all these entrance uh, examination results will also go up to July last week, or maybe August also, we are not sure. So that way, there are a lot of time. By that time, I think COVID also might have come to some, uh, uh, let us say, you know, reduced also. Uh, if after that also, they can visit and take a decision. But, uh, there's only one parameter for the selecting the college, but uh, they, they look into a lot of uh, uh, parameters already which is available everywhere, actually. Right. They can take that. Right. Mr. Neeraj, if you want to add something quickly to it uh, before we take up the last question. As the finishing note, I would just uh, accept uh, and advise the same to all our viewers. Nevertheless, if they want to uh, explore more, again, virtually, I think all the uh, institutes on their website will be having, at least uh, Reva has the 360 degree virtual tour. They can take uh, a virtual tour of the entire uh, available uh, infra infrastructural facilities at the campus. Also adding to this, uh, Reva is organizing a series of webinars starting uh, for the entire month of May. I mean, uh, students, viewers may join uh, for all these kind of webinars, which will be program specific for computer technology, electrical electronics, then uh, again, mechanical, civil core branches. This will address to all the uh, basic questions of the students and parents. So I think everyone now uh, will accept to the situation that there are uh, facilities uh, which can be uh, accepted at um, uh, 
as uh, good as visiting the campus. Nevertheless, I would agree that again, the decision, uh, some around 40 to 50% has already been made by the student and the parent. I think the final call can be taken in due course of time by August. That is all, thank you. All right, thank you, Neeraj, sir. So we'll be taking up the last question of the day. Uh, in fact, um, I personally would want all the panelists to answer this because again, that's something of very prime importance for the student. Uh, we'll start off with Professor Subramanya. Uh, so the question says, uh, does the increased time gap uh, will be affecting the quality of education and the time frame in which the degree completion will happen? What, what are your take, what's your take on this? No, I don't think because uh, every year we are starting in August. This time we'll be starting in uh, September. So there is there'll be only one month delay is point number one. And uh, to again come back to August uh, calendar of events, it'll take two years. Every year we should cut short 15 days. Then you can come back to August. And uh, I don't think because uh, we are supposed to conduct 90 days in a semester, 180 days in a year. There are a lot of UGC stipulations. I don't think any institution can simply uh, curtail the classes and things of that sort, either is online or offline. So we are You're supposed right. to do it. That way, I don't think quality of education will suffer in any way. Uh, it's only uh, procrastination people may be making, but I'm sure that any college, we have a lot of statutory norms which have to be followed. So in that way, it is not going to definitely affect the calendar of events. Maybe next year, instead of uh, eight weeks holiday, student may get six week holiday, six weeks holidays, that's all. So if you can uh, bear that for two years, uh, then all the calendar of events will be as uh, intact what we are doing uh, pre-COVID itself. All right. Thank you so yes. much, sir. Uh, Dr. Prasad. Yeah, as, uh, as Professor Subramanya said that uh, it is it is not going to be any any change in the whole pattern of the thing. Only thing that it's just extended for 30 days. Uh, the 30 days will be covered up, uh, adjusted during the, uh, what do you call, holidays or something, and the timetables will be tweaked in such a way that the entire syllabus and the, the, uh, the theoretical as well as practical classes have been uh, complied with as per the regulations or norms of the uh, agencies which are regulating us. Okay. Dr. Just to, if you want to add something. Yeah, I agree with the panelists there because nothing will be affected. It's going as usual now. There's no change there. Perfect. So, Mr. Neeraj, uh, just last yeah. few words from your side. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I mean, just to add that uh, we definitely will be abiding by the uh, regulations laid by the uh, bodies. In fact, UGC has come down. Uh... So, your voice is not audible. Mr. Neeraj, your voice is not audible. It's not audible. Yeah, yeah, sorry. I think it was on mute. So, uh, I think I was just speaking that uh, we all will be abiding by the regulatory bodies. UGC has uh, again come up uh, saying that we will be uh, going with uh, uh, six days a week instead of five days a week, where even there was a provision of five days. It is also said uh, that from 1st of September, the session will begin. Earlier, it was from uh, 1st of August to 15th of August, the induction courses by AICT. So they are coming, uh, I mean, much step ahead to help uh, the institutions and the universities. We all just need to apply. better for each one of us uh, and the stakeholders even to go through nothing to worry and i think it will be useful beneficial and uh, effective for each one of us thank you mr Niels. thank you so much uh, in fact on behalf of shiksha.com we thank all the panelists uh, professor k n subramanya dr prasanna kumar dr narsima mr neeraj singh for taking out the valuable time and uh, sharing the suggestions with the students on all the queries that they had in fact, uh, career making has become uh, in a tougher challenge for the students given the kind of the pandemic that we are in. With all your thoughts, I believe that students will be able to take the right decisions considering their career options and uh, their passion for something which they want to explore. Uh, again, on behalf of Shiksha, we thank you all. We thank the audience.
of uh, having being patient enough to attend and ask their questions and uh, getting the answers to their particular questions if you have any more doubts you can visit uh, shiksha.com for your uh, queries uh, you have information we have information about more than 30000 colleges on shiksha.com there are around 1.75 lakh plus reviewed reviews by the existing or the passed out students from the various colleges which are all authenticated thank you so much thank you so much for your time and uh, we you. hope that we come out of it in a stronger way and a better way making the world a better place to live in thanks sir thank, thank you karan thank, thank you karan thank you sir thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. professor subramanya thank you neeraj thank you professor uh, professor neeraj and narsimha thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Namaste.